start from the top. Um, today, the purpose of today is to catch a breather, to be able to ask questions you might have uh, from chapter four and five, rather, and any questions from homework that you didn't have a chance to run by me or you weren't sure if you wanted to ask me uh, to do it by a video or whatnot, or if you want, <laughs> I got you, Aiden, thank you, um, or if you wanted um, to try a harder question or whatnot just to test your metal. Um, there's a variety of ways you can do that, but I did want to spend today uh, trying different questions. So this question I did with my other class too. I pulled out from the textbook. I made up another question on ambiguous case because, uh, hint, hint, that is something different from grade 10 and I wanted to make sure you know it, huh? Okay, um, I also want an opportunity for you to do cast rule and uh, and then maybe another sinusoidal question. I know I did, I think I did the Ferris wheel style question with you. Yes? Anyone? Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, I, I think I did a Ferris wheel style question. I also, I think I did the, uh, you know, water bobbing up and down. I have another example that I can give you today is just making sure we're touching all the bases and, you know, not making any mistakes, I guess. Sorry, uh, I'm late, also, Mr. Kim. My Wi-Fi wasn't working. Yeah, I got you. I, uh, Aiden just texted a uh, message, so I can figure that out. Thanks. I'm glad you're here, though. Um, so with that said, um, if there is a burning question that you wanted to ask, then now is a good time to do it. Okay, so it's going to be more of a tutorial. Uh, let's get started. Um, any questions specifically that you tried over homework, you think you got it, you know, maybe it'll be helpful to the class, anything like that. We can do that now. Anyone want to recommend or propose a question we do? No? I have a feeling you're just going to wait on me and let me do whatever I have on the menu, so... Don't hesitate to stop me and ask a question or suggest a question of your own, okay? My goal today will be, if there's no suggestions, a question you see here from the textbook, an ambiguous style question, and a sinusoidal style question. And then that's it for today. Ferris wheel one, yeah, we can have, I have another one, maybe not Ferris wheel, I have a, a slight spin-off, but it's virtually the same thing, okay? Please take a look. This is chapter 4, 4.4, 4, 4.5. Um, yeah. At the center of a lagoon is a sunken volcano. Just a way of saying there's an island in the middle of that circle. From point A, oops, I drew point A wrong. A is up there. Or down here. From point A to point B, you walk... Uh, four kilometers straight to uh, uh, the distance between the two is exactly four kilometers. If the angle CAB, that's the bottom corner right there, is 53 degrees, uh, what is the radius of the circle? What is the distance from C to D? And then there is a angle of elevation question from point C. Okay, let's see if you do it. Pull out a piece of paper and try it. If you you don't have to copy this question per se, you can do a little drawing if you like. The question itself will always be available on YouTube, so get to it. I'm going to give you, I would say, under five minutes. So let's take this up at exactly 2.13. Try it, please. Okay, so clearly I've, yeah, for the sake of recording, I forgot to record all of it, but that's not particularly important. Um, for those of you who might have been watching this video, this is part B, or part C rather. Um, but again, this question, I don't think it's particularly grade 11 level. It's something that you could still have done in grade 10. If you had a little bit of the, you know, spatial visual abilities to think in 3D. What I have for you instead is a, an ambiguous case next, 
And I'm going to try to word it in a way so that it might seem tricky. But as always, your goal is to try to identify a triangle. Okay. Again, last chance. Any questions you might have regarding this question? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, again, you don't have to copy this question, but if you want to keep it in your notes so you don't have to consult your computer every time you study, then copy this down. Um, so how about I start with some context. Skeet shooting is a very weird sport. A newbie um, is aiming at an angle of elevation of 30 degrees, waiting for a disc to appear at its line of, at their line of sight. Okay, a disc thrower is located 200 meters horizontally away from the newbie. Um, the disc launches, oh, the thrower, disc thrower launches a disc 120 meters straight. It's not a parabola, okay? Just for the sake of the question and drawing a triangle, launches a disc 120 meters straight into the sky in the uh, vision, was it in the, I guess, into the scope of the newbie. What is the distance between the newbie and the disc at the time the trigger is pulled? In other words, when the disc is shot, okay? So again, uh, to help you a little bit, I am going to try to model something. Okay, so there is the thing, and here is a disc launcher, and I have this disc. Uh, this person aiming at a 30 degree ele angle of elevation, the distance between the, the, I guess the athlete and the launcher is 200 meters. I am asking if this launcher launches a disc towards the, the scope of the, of the, I guess, shooter, what would the distance be between the person and the disc? And that's it. Um, what can I say to, to help you out? Your goal always when it comes to these trigonometric, trigonometric questions is to see if you can identify the triangle involved. Because if you can, then we're dealing with um, sine law, cosine law, Sokatoa, it gives you a better picture of what you can use uh, to solve the question. Okay, I'd like to give you another five minutes, see if you can do it. Again, even if you can't solve it completely, see if you can identify the triangle you're using. Okay, uh, assuming, again, if you were looking at this, uh, you could pause the video and stuff like that, but uh, I'm just going to pretend that you paused and you tried it, and here we go. Uh, I'm going to approach this in a very strategic way, very similar to the question um, with thing one and thing two. Okay, um, It says that the disc was launched 120 meters. Well, how do you know the 120 meters is enough? Like, what if, what if 120 meters is just right here and stops right there, and then it falls back into the ground? Or maybe 100 meters this way is just throwing it up there and then it never actually touches that dotted line before falling, falling down to the ground, right? So if you are being very, 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 I guess, detail oriented, what you might want to check was whether the shortest distance between the disc and this dotted line was actually within range of 120 meters, right? And what does that mean? If it was a perfectly perpendicular line, 
then what you're going to test first is whether this creates a 90 degree triangle or not. Right? Um, and I'll do that in a second. Let's pretend you didn't check it. Well, your goal, as I said before, was to create a triangle. So let's say you pretend to create a triangle like this. This is probably the most typical triangle that you would draw. In. And you would see that, uh, what do you call it, 30, 200, and this is 120. What is the information given? A, S, S, or S, S, A. It is sign law, but it is a special acronym that tells you that it is going to be an ambiguous case, which would then logically get you to think about where else could I put this line? Is it this way? No, it doesn't make any difference between my previous triangle. Maybe it's this way, right? Maybe 120 degrees, actually, uh, 120 meters actually brings me completely to the other side of a vertical. Right, lots of different ways you can analyze this, but let's start with the first method where I am going to investigate whether 120 meters is actually enough. I'm going to create an imaginary line going perfectly 90 degrees. And for those of you who are having a little bit of trouble seeing what the 90 degree is, take that triangle I've made and essentially flip it. Right. That's actually the floor that I do not know the line, uh, the length of. My arrow is a 90 degree that you see there. And the solid line, oops, and the solid line of 200 meters is actually the hypotenuse. I hope you see it. I essentially took this triangle and flipped it on its head. So if I am looking for that arrow distance, that is this. I am looking for the opposite side of 30 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite side over 200. Um, I'm going to do some quick math. Sine 30 is half. Half multiplied by 200. The opposite side is 100. In other words, 120 meters is enough. All I needed was 100 meters to create a triangle. That means my 120 meter line is either longer on this side of that arrow or it's longer on this side of that arrow okay so again if you do the 90 degree triangle it gives you a reference point and gives you a place you can swing your arrows left to right and, and see two different cases for this scenario okay so let me erase this once again So I'm going to use a dotted line to indicate where my mid, I guess the shortest distance should be, which means my arrow is either going to be in this direction or my arrow is going to be in this direction, left and right side of that 90 degree line. So it's going to be 120 and 120. Um, another thing that I want to mention, because this is slightly different than my thing one, thing two question. The calculator is programmed to give you the most efficient, or in, in other words, the angle between 0 and 90, the smallest angle possible. So when you do your sign law here, the calculator will actually calculate this smaller angle. It will calculate the larger of the two triangles. Okay. And you'll see how that works. From there, we'll figure out if al uh, theta is this way, then that gives me information for this angle. We'll call it alpha. And with that angle, it gives me information of the other angle on the other side, the supplemental angle. We'll call that angle beta. And then that'll, again, open up some more, uh, I guess, other information about this triangle. Let's do it. Um, color coordinating, I have this angle matching with the opposite side 120 and i also have let's use red a distance of 200 matching with the opposite angle which happens to be this theta okay 
that will help us a lot. And when in doing so, if you know that angle, then it will help us calculate the wide angle here of this triangle, which will then help us using sine law calculate the final distance we're looking for. All right? Let's do it. Sine of 30 degrees is paired with the length 200. That is equal to sine some angle theta, which is paired with the 200 length. Again, I'm going to bank on your practice thus far, since we're already in chapter 5. I'm going to assume you've had enough practice with sine law and fractions. Sine theta would be sine of 30 multiplied by 200 divided by 120, which gives us approximately 0 0.33, or sorry, 0 0.833, and that can be repeating. I'm going to take that answer to the inverse sine. That gives me 56.44 degrees. I'm leaving two decimal places because it makes the answer a bit more accurate. Next, if that is my theta, what is my green? Let's call this uh, gamma. What is angle gamma? Being part of a triangle, 180 minus 30 degrees minus 56.44 tells me that the green angle is 93.56 degrees. Using that, once again, sine of 30 is paired with 120. That is going to be the same ratio as sine 93.56 degrees paired with the unknown length B. It's the green dotted length long one. If you don't like the, the unknown value in the denominator, you can always use the reciprocal ratios. Um, or you can just muscle it through, multiply both sides by D, multiply both sides by 120, so on and so forth. Let's do it the easy way. I'm going to use the reciprocals of both because they should still have the same ratios. And D will be 194.54 meters. Okay. So the far distance is going to be 194.54 meters. Great. We're not done, of course. That is one of the two potential triangles. So I might give you like three marks for that. One mark for sure for a correct triangle, and two, or if I'm generous, three marks for proper sign law. Okay, that's it. But remember, don't erase all of this because the old calculations will help us with the new triangle. So let's go back. Going back, I'm going to go ahead and remind you that I don't need this anymore. I don't need this any, oops. I don't need that part anymore. I'm going to remind you that because these two are so because we're dealing with an isosceles triangle, remember, angle theta is the same as angle alpha. So angle alpha is going to be the same as theta, which is 56.44 degrees. Angle alpha and angle beta make a supplementary angle of 180. In other words, 180 minus alpha is going to give me beta, which is 123.56 degrees. Let's update this picture. 123.56 degrees. Now we're getting to our final bit. 30 degrees paired with 120 is the same as uh, angle of 
123.56 to side length 200, which is the same as the last angle here paired with the second distance that we are looking for. So, and uh, what did I call this? Gamma, should we do epsilon? Um, phi? Phi. How about that? Okay, it's a circle with a line through. It's another letter. I know, it's a little weird. Um, let's pretend the angle phi is going to be equal to 180 minus 30 minus 123.56. That little angle, the green angle, is going to be oof, 30, 150, 26.44 degrees. Final bit, sine of 30 ratioed to 120 is the same as sine 26.44 ratio to the other d value that I don't know. Again, you can rearrange it. I'm going to just do that in my head because I'm going to rely on your practice. Times sine of 26.44 divided by sine 30. The d value is going to be 106.86, assuming that I didn't do any calculations wrong. Yeah, I think that's correct. Okay, so therefore, the disk could be 106.86 meters or 194.54 meters when it is shot down. That is grade 11. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even consider that to be a particularly special um, ambiguous case question. It is a little different because the arrow, if you remember the thing one, thing two question, our arrow was, was down here. It was a lot easier to see how it could be two different triangles. But for this particular question, where I am going came from the lower side. So it might have been a little bit harder to visualize a triangle. But now you know. Even this kind of triangle is possible. And having more experience, opening your eye or having your eyes open to different examples out there just makes the next question that much easier. So practice it. Any questions? Um, Mr. Kim, with the first question, when you did when you found out that 120 meters is enough, mm -hmm. I'm not I don't understand how you figured that out. Um, well, did you notice that I created a 90 degree triangle? Yeah, I have that drawn out. Excellent. Um, that, that's all it really was. So if you notice, um, I am going to try to mimic it. The red line is here. I have my green line here. And then my blue line actually turned it into a 90 degree triangle. I have my red blue line here. Do you see it? Yeah. So. I first tested what the height, what this distance would have been if it was a 90 degree triangle. That's all it was. Again, this angle is a 30. This hypotenuse is 200. And I'm just wondering, what is this length? Okay. That's all it was. So it was a 90 degree triangle. I used Sokatoa. Using 30 degrees, I checked opposite over hypotenuse, which is sine. And I found that this was uh, like a, uh, was 100 meters. 100 was enough. So if the question said I shot the disc 120 meters, that means I shot this far. Clearly, that's not in the scope. So 120 must have been down here or over there. Oh, OK, I understand. Yeah.
by all means, everyone else, I, I might have just gone fast because, again, I am taking for granted. Um, you've had lots of practice doing this um, because you've, you know, given yourself an opportunity to try textbook questions and the, the questions that I printed out for you in that package. If you haven't, not in the textbook, but in the actual handouts that I provided, there should be a bunch of ambiguous case questions in the sheet. So put the textbook aside and try those questions first. They're all ambiguous. And some of them ask you to draw triangles. So it'll be really good practice. Anything else? Okay. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to ask cast rule questions because some of if some of you. Uh, took a look at the, um, the online quest right now that's live. It starts off with a lot of cast rule questions. But how about we get through the um, sinusoidal example that I have for you? And then from there, um, anyone who wants to stick around and ask me questions, uh, you can. OK? Uh, to note, uh, since we've talked about the quest anyways, the quest is live. And as you've seen in my post on our stream last week, you have all week to do it, but it has to be done by Friday at midnight. If you are going to have trouble doing it by then, I should have known by now that you couldn't. Okay, I will give you until tonight to figure out whether you have the time and opportunity to do this quest before time runs out Friday midnight oh to find the variable angle either way ian uh the question was is it would you rather i uh would i rather you do this by subtracting angles to find the interior angle or use sign law to identify it? either way you should get the same answer so do what is most efficient for you okay Here we go. All right, I have a, an interesting question for you. I am going to ask you to try this one. So it's, a, it's an example I'm just creating. Um, a fly sits on a windmill uh, on, on the edge of a windmill, I guess, is it, you call it a propeller? Okay, um, that stands. No, no, that sits on the edge of a windmill that stands at a max height of 15 meters from the ground. The axle of the windmill is found. Hmm. All right, everyone, I'm going to intentionally make a mistake and see if you can catch it. It is rotating once every two minutes. Um, state an e sinusoidal equation that models the height of the fly. Um, assume the fly begins rotating from max height. Okay. Let's see. And then I will do part B. State another equation that matches this, that models this movement using the same parent function and then part c state another equation that models this movement using a different parent function that's my challenge that'll bring us to the end of the day i will give you it's 
48. I'll give you seven minutes. We're going to start this at 2.55. We'll see um, how you do. Okay. Hmm. All right. Did someone catch the error? Anyone catch the error of my question yet? Something that makes absolutely no sense. No, no. Remember, this is a oh, sorry. This is a sinusoidal question. Okay, so we uh, don't I think I know. Need... Pardon? I think I know. And what's the problem of so my then, question? Uh, you don't have the windmill rotating, going up and down, and then also the fifteen might be, want to be moved to the middle, because that and that's like the highest point. And not to the side, but that's just like. Careful. Well, well it, it does says the wheel is rotating one. So, I mean, I didn't draw it, but it, it is rotating right now. 
But um, there is something wrong with the numbers that I gave you. Um, can I say it? Yeah, go go for it. Um, if the axle of the windmill is six meters off the ground and the max height is fifteen meters, then that would make it nine meters difference from the axle to the top. But that's further than it is from the axle to the ground. Mm -hmm. so going Excellent. To Take a look. Um. Okay, uh, thank you, Emily, I got you. Um, yeah, as Lucas said, I said the axle. By axle, it basically means the... What an axle is, it's basically like the cylindrical thing that attaches a wheel as it rotates. So you see an axle for a car, you'll see axles for, you know, wagons, you know, that, that are drawn by horses and stuff like that. It's basically a cylindrical thing. If that location right there is supposed to be six meters off the ground, how long is the actual windmill propeller? It's supposed to be nine meters, which means if this propeller rotates around, it will be longer than the actual distance off the ground and the windmill should be digging into the floor, right? So unless the story tells you that it's supposed to be digging underneath, um, it wouldn't make any sense. So it's, it's important to know. So yes, I made a mistake. Um, and so I, this time I'm going to change it. Let's say the axle is actually 10 meters off the ground. And away you go. See if you can give me an equation that matches this story. And now, um, that's a good call. I'm going to give you another maybe four minutes. Do your best, especially part B and part C. Uh, it's going to be, I think, a very good review. And I will pause the video and come back once we're ready. Okay, just a couple more, just maybe one more minute. And just as a pointer, uh, I like you to really think about these propellers rotating and figure out what is... What height are we reaching and coming back to? Try to convert this story as AKDC. That should help you identify an equation. All right, let's do this. A um, couple of things that we can do, uh, but again, it's sometimes the way I think about it may be very different to the way you think about it. I'm going to convert this entire windmill as if it was the, the graph, and the ground is going to be where my x-axis is. If you think about it, um, my axle is at 10 meters, which means I can reach a maximum of 15 meters, as the question says. And if you follow that same idea and follow the height of this fly underneath the axle, I think you can understand that I go underneath the mid-axle by a distance of 5 meters. And if you draw these limitations on a graph, or at least just visualize it, you can see 15, 5 my max and min, and my mid-axis, my central axis, is going to be at 10. The dotted lines look familiar? 
right? We're sort of on our way of creating our box. So 10 would be my vertical shift. And my amplitude is how far up or down I go from the mid-axis. So my amplitude would be a 5. All that's left really is to identify A, K, D, oh, it's a K and D. Next, D I'm going to leave last because it takes a little bit of thinking. The K we can calculate because we know the K is equal to the old divided by the new period. The old period is always 360 degrees. The question here says that the wheel is rotating once every two minutes. In other words, the period is two minutes. Um, some of you, uh, if, if you are like my first class, then some of you might have converted that into seconds because it, it's a larger number to use. Some of you might have just left it as two minutes and just wrote that because that's my new period. Either one works. But just know that if you put a two and you're assuming time is in minutes, this time, this t value that you can plug into the equation must be in minutes. If you decided to use 120, and that becomes seconds, and the k value will adjust itself accordingly. And you have to divide 360 by 120. I'm going to take a gamble and assume that you just left it at 2 minutes, because that's what my other class did as well. And my old period is 360, my new period is 2, so my equation should have a k value of 180. Lastly, the D value comes from whether I have a shift or not. We can assume the fly begins rotating at max height. And we have two choices. Do you want to use the sine function or the cosine function? Please remember, the sine function begins not at a maximum, but right at the central axis, whereas cosine begins at a maximum and returns to the maximum. That was a terrible curve. Okay. If you decided to use sine as a sine function for your sinusoidal, you would have to account for the fact that the shift must be one fourth of a period to the left or equivalent three fourths of a period to the right. Anyways, um, because I want to start, in other words, I need my Y axis to have the curve at a maximum. For cosine, I don't have to do anything. It's already at a maximum. So if I use cosine, I don't have to worry about a phase shift. So how about we use that as an easy beginning? Okay, I'm going to use cosine as my parent function. I should have actually kept that. I'm going to use my cosine as my parent function and say 5 cosine 180 time, I don't have to worry about D, plus 10. That will model my fly. Questions for part A, or part A right here? Yeah? I hope you like my fly, by the way. I worked really hard for it. Um, wouldn't the T be in brackets? Yes, Gemma, we can definitely write it that way. But because there's nothing really happening to the T inside the bracket, it becomes a, a useless bracket. Like, it doesn't serve a purpose. So you don't have to draw it if you don't want to. If there was a phase shift, we would definitely need it, though, as you will see in the next example. So. Give me another equation using cosine that models the same equation, or the models the same shape. Yes, Kinda. It just it was more useful to use a cosine because the question said I was already at max height, and by default, the cosine curve begins at the maximum. So it was just more useful. But it doesn't mean you can't use sine, as you will see in our next example. So, oh. give me another equation using cosine that models the exact same equation.
equation. Oh, exact same curve, sorry. Just give it a quick thought. Any ideas? Could you scale up the uh, coefficients or like values for K, A, C, D? Uh, I see what you're saying. We cannot scale, as you mentioned, because if we were to increase the amplitude, let's say by two or multiply by two, then I'm actually in changing the shape of my, uh, my windmill. Right? Um, Carson, you raise a good point, but that's also not true. We cannot change the k value by, by assuming that it's in seconds because that actually gives us a completely different curve. Let me give you an example. One second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. And this is 10, and this is uh, 5, and this is 15. Right now, my curve my one cycle completes in two seconds, right? And so my, that's one cycle. That's another cycle, okay? Can you extend the period to 360 degrees? No, again, if you change the period, that means we are changing how long it takes for the windmill to turn. And going back to what Carson was saying, um, if I turn this, sorry, this is in minutes, sorry, minutes, minutes. If I turn this into seconds, one cycle needs to be complete in 120. What does that mean? That means the curve that I'm drawing would be something like that, and it goes all the way to 120 seconds. It's a completely different curve. It's incredibly stretched out. Can you add a D value that moves the entire thing backwards? Yes, that's where we're going at. What we can do is, what is the difference between starting here versus starting here, right? So here's what I'm going to do. You can create the exact same curve by doing a quick phase shift because, remember, sinusoidal functions go on forever. So what if I shift to the left by a full cycle? Does that change uh, how I model or change the shape of the curve? Absolutely not. I start at the maximum. I still complete a one cycle every two minutes. My amplitude is still a five, and my horizontal, my vertical shift is still ten. Everything about it is the same, even if I shift it one full cycle to the right. So what you could do is say. 5 is the amplitude, here's my cosine, here's my k value, which tells me my period is 2, but I am going to shift it a full cycle to the left. What is a full cycle? It's 2. So I'm going to shift it 2 to the left. This gives me exactly the same shape as the black equation. Is there another one? It can be a little bit creative. I mean, a d value of zero would be the same thing, but it's not really a change. Yeah, it's the same. The d value in, in the, the black equation is, is still zero. Here's another one. I'm going to shift it a half cycle to the right, which means my equation begins at a minimum. How do I turn that to a maximum? Yes. Yes, Kinda. Reflection. This green equation will give me the same thing. I shifted half a period to the left, which makes me start at a minimum, and then I flipped it. You will see all three of these give you the exact same shape on Desmos.com. Which brings me 
to part C. I think that will make part C much easier. Oops. Part C is this. Okay. I am starting with a sine curve. Uh, let's use red. Sine curve is the exact same thing as a cosine curve, except I'm starting at a minimum. So if I want to give you an equation using the sine curve, I am going to have to move this red curve a quarter of a period to the left so that I start at a maximum. For part C, the answer would be uh, 5, same, same uh, amplitude, sine, same period of two minutes, time, I'm shifting it a quarter to the left. In other words, a quarter of two is 0 0.5 plus 10. That will give you the same equation as if I typed it in as cosine. It's all the same shape, it's just a matter of expressing using a different uh, parent function. Okay. Is it a quarter? I thought it was one. It would be a quarter. Oh, yeah, because it's coming from 10, my bad. Yeah. Okay, so two, just, yeah, from, from middle to maximum. There it is. Any questions? Might seem a little bit rough, but um, would call. I think this will be very helpful to the quest. Uh, guaranteed, there is going to be some kind of Ferris wheel or something. And being a at-home assignment slash test, of course, I'm trying to make it a little bit tricky to really see if you can make sense a reality, like a, a um, like common sense out of the description that's given, as well as see if you can transfer, create different equations using sine or cosine at changing the sine or cosine is not some limitation that you have okay but do your best with it you have all week and if you're having trouble with the question maybe you can find a similar one on the in the textbook or something and ask away do what you need to do it is 3 three fourteen. um if there are no other questions you are dismissed if you do have a question please stay behind and i'll answer it as best i can Kinda asks, could you also do negative 5 sine 180t plus 0.25 plus 10? Oh, 0.25. 0.25 means um, a quarter this way and then reflected. Um, point, are you sure you're talking about 0.25? Because a 0.25 doesn't necessarily make me start at a maximum. I think maybe you meant 0.5. Give me a second. Um, oh, how about this? How about we decide instead of moving it left, how about I move it right? So let's pretend this is my, here, let me erase this. How about we pretend, okay, my sine curve is up, down, down, oops, up, down, down, up. And then down, up, up, down. Up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up. We can pretend we can move a quarter of a period to the right. So the curve is beginning at a minimum. And then we can do a reflection. We can do that. So it will be negative sine 180 t minus 0 0.5 plus 10. Or can the, what you can do is, um, doing this, we can also do, 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 do like that. We can do 3 fourths of a period to the right. We can do that. We can do positive 5 sine 180 t minus 1.5. 
and that will also let us start at a maximum. Helen, it is not multiple chances. You could think about it as a one-shot assignment. Okay, so take your time with it. There is no time limit other than the fact that um, it, it's closed at 11.59. Or not closed, but it's, it's considered late, and therefore I'm not going to accept it at 11.59. Okay. Any other questions?